what in the world is going on in our lives right now, right? Oh, you know what? We don't know what's going on, but you know what it reminds me of? Um, I used, when, when I was younger, my great grandmother and I spent a lot of time together. And um, do you remember the days where if it thunderstormed, your grandmother would turn off the power? Did she, she turn everything off? off. Everything. Quiet. And we couldn't, yeah, we couldn't talk. We couldn't move. You know, no. That storm to pass. She told me that God was working and that we had to turn everything off and wait. And you know what? And this reminds me in so many ways that the whole world is standing still at the same time. And we have an opportunity across the whole world to care for each other and to wait together. It, it is amazing. That's pretty poignant. That so how are, you, how are you staying sane and how are you balancing things? Because you got to run the whole county, but you still got to be a mom and, pre and be present. I, I know at times it's been a struggle for me uh you know because i'm working from home and my kids are here and my husband's yeah. here and uh, how yeah you, well you, you know doing? what i have to tell you the truth you know this is a, a pretty crazy lifestyle anyway just like yep. you right so we're accustomed to the rigor so it is not the rigor that has gotten to me it is the emotional aspect of it you know i'm not used to saying today we have 2409 people who are sick with this virus we have 80 people who died right so that part of it has been very stressful for me. Um, it's just knowing that whatever decisions we make are life and death decisions. That's not always the case. But you know what? So I have with this time we've had at home, I've had the opportunity now. Today I was up. I got to run here on the treadmill. I've spent additional time at doing devotionals uh, here. I'm going to learn before this time is over how to do yoga. I'm going to teach myself how to do yoga for, for relaxation as well. And I have to tell you, and I'm not saying this because they're watching, but Millette, I have the best team ever. Mm -hmm. These people work me to death. They are wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they are caring. When I wake up in the morning, I already have a number of text messages and emails. They text and write all night long. Yeah. They're on top of this with me. So I'm definitely not in it alone. Right. And that has been the joy of it is just this team is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, and that's how you, you have to balance it. I mean, you do have an important job, but you do have to remember to, to take care of you. Self-care is very mm -hmm. important. Your daughter is watching how you handle yourself in stressful situations. So she's learning from mom. Well, you know what? This morning, uh -huh. we ate breakfast and played Connect Four. Oh, Come on now. God. Like, when do you get to do that, right? <laughs> we, got, we played Connect Four and ate breakfast together. I have that's breakfast nice. now at the table. I have, well, I have three meals a day mm -hmm. at my table with my daughter. It's wow. the best thing ever. It really is the best thing ever. And so the, that aspect of it has been very, um, you know, restoring in a way. Yeah. You know, I've enjoyed it so much just having her here. She's a teenager, so she, you know, like your daughter, probably doesn't want to be bothered with you some parts of the day, right? Mm -hmm. Where they yeah. used to when they were younger. If this had happened a few years ago, I would have been called upon to play all day long. Now, because she has school part of the day, she has, you know, other things she likes to do, but we find more time in the day than we ever have to bump into each other, even if it's just to go get popsicles together in the kitchen while we're running off to something else. Um, so it has been wonderful. We take walks through our neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we talk and talk and more talk. And I have loved, I just, you know, I, I that part of it, I tell you, I wouldn't trade for anything. Yeah. This, just the special times we've been here quarantined in, in many ways, except, you know, I go out um, to do the press conferences and uh, a few other things that are required. But otherwise, just the time at home yeah. has been just invaluable. I wouldn't trade it for anything, just having the time. I totally agree with you on that. And, and I, I totally agree. And I know one of our Instagram um, live viewers asked about you know oh you can't go outside without a mask and i know we have new rules going mm -hmm. into effect in georgia's county tomorrow you want to quickly kind of talk about that yeah so listen everybody who tuned in listen to me i want you to have your face covered now whether that means you have a mask or not because there are some people who don't have a mask right you know but i want your face covered please if that means a scarf a bandana a t-shirt something what we are trying to do is to stop the spread of this virus. And what we know right now is the only medicine for it is social distancing, distancing yeah. and covering your mouth to keep what we, what the doctors are telling me is we need to keep our germs to ourselves. 
That's what they've been telling us. And we now, when you see 2,400 cases yeah. and 80 people dying in a month's time, that means that we have to go to drastic measures. And there's nothing too much to save the lives of the people we love and care about so much. And so that's what this is about. And the faster we do that, the faster this whole thing can pass and we can get on about our lives. But the, the mask means that in retail, when you go out to shop now, uh, so in essential places that you're shopping, this doesn't mean the bank, for example. So not all essential businesses, it means mm -hmm. essential retail. Yeah. So when you go to pick up your fast food, when you're grocery shopping, when you're going even to pick up beer and wine, you know, people, are, I've gotten a lot of complaints about the liquor stores. Uh, we want people in the, in the Home Depot, um, in, in, if you have to go into Target, we want people to be covered, to cover your face during those times. And when you're out and about and you're exercising, it's inconvenient to do so, but it's best also uh, if you can during those times um, to, to cover up. Yeah. And one other um, important thing that I want to mention, we're all home for the most part, those of us who are able and blessed enough to be able to work from home. But when we are home, maybe take advantage of uh, filling out the census. It took me, what, five minutes to fill that out? And I know that's been a big thing for you yeah. in the county to make sure everybody is counted. Uh, you know, and it really is pretty simple to do online. If you didn't get your information in the mail, um, mm -hmm. go online and do it. What do you want to tell people about that? It's so simple. It takes 10 minutes. And you know what? And it makes all the difference. We lost 300, hear me on this, $360 million wow. over the last 10 years. We can't afford to lose that kind of money because we were the one of the most undercounted jurisdictions in Maryland. Come on, Prince George's, we can do better than that. And it means- So when you say for, we lost it, what, what did we, who lost? What did the we county did in federal and critical federal funding. What happens is each person, um, it's $1,800 per person per year hmm. is what we get when we're counted in that federal count. So the, so the, uh, the Article One of the United States Constitution requires the United States to count its citizens every 10 years. And based on that count, we get critical federal resources, dollars for school lunches, dollars for Medicare, even roads right. and infrastructure. And even when businesses make decisions about where they're going to locate restaurants, they use census mm. data. And this right. means, that, and also the representative, it, it, we, we decide how many representatives we get per jurisdiction based on the census count. So it has to be accurate. But what I'm saying is $1,800 per person. Yeah. When you fail to fill per year, that for us meant that we lost $36 million a year for the last 10 years, $360 million. And so come on, please, 10 minutes it takes. I fill mine out. It takes no time at all um, to go and fill that out. And that means that for all of us, for our county, especially as we're digging out of this coronavirus yeah. uh, crisis, we're going to need all of those dollars to take care of, of our residents, and we need that money. Okay, so I, I, before we let you go, two more quick things. First, okay, I've been eating a lot of snacks, more so than usual. Um, <laughs> sour cream and onion, potato chips, and lots of chocolate. What have you been eating that you normally don't eat, but you've been eating because of this whole thing? These popsicles. I don't know what it is with the popsicles, <laughs> but I have two. I have these boxes of popsicles. And I go down there and I wear out these popsicles. I don't know what, that's what I've been eating. I love these popsicles. So I've been having, enjoying popsicles. And you know what? My daughter and I like the Sour Patch Kids, but you have to try the watermelon. Oh my. The watermelon gosh. Sour Patch Kids are everything. Okay. So I've been eating those. And, um, and just, you know what? And also I've been challenging myself to try to cook a few different things here oh. and there. So I like cooking, but don't always have the time that I have for it now. And so just, challenging myself to cook different things so you know but the popsicles that's what i have been focused on i'm all yeah. cooked out I, I i can't cook another meal today i told my kids they were on their own they had to uh, uh, put a frozen pizza in the oven okay so final thing what's the light at the end of the tunnel for us what do you see oh my god you know what there's so many lights at the end of this tunnel and i want everyone to be focused on that you know it's like how i started out by saying my grandma my great grandmother, Grandma James, said in this period, you know what, God is just working. Mm -hmm. And truly he is. At the end of it, we're going to have some grief left because we will have lost some people. Uh, we're going to have some people who have discovered relationships uh, that they didn't know were as important to them. They will have spent extra time with their families. And you know what, when this is all done, we're going to rebuild as a community. 
not only rebuild our health, now we understand that it's critically important that we do everything we can not to have those chronic medical conditions that make it difficult for us to recover. So we're going to focus on inviting into the county and attracting restaurants that serve us healthy foods. Mm -hmm. We're going to also win this. So we're going to focus on our health. I have never seen so many people as I see now who are out and about walking with their families. They're out and about Mm -hmm. on bicycles. So community, the sense of community has grown because of this. So guess what? I I say all this to say we're going to come up out of this stronger than ever before. So watch out, Corona. What was meant to destroy us is actually going to build us and make us even stronger. We're going to get through this. Thank you so much for your leadership. God bless you. you. And thank your team, you. because this is a lot and unprecedented. And we thank you for your leadership and just being a great example to so many of us in the county. So well, thank, thank you. you. Let you inspire us. You inspire <laughs> us. I want to tell you that for your energy and compassion. We just I just get inspired by you, how hard you work. We're going to get through this together. And also to say to our team, the frontline healthcare workers, the health department, all of those who are out essential workers, the firefighters, the police, those who are stocking shelves in grocery stores, say thank you, please. I want to say thank you to all those who are working while we're in our homes uh, to make sure that our communities go forward. We are praying for you, and we're going to get through this together. So thank you, Millette, and, uh, and I hope you continue to enjoy your family and enjoy those snacks. Certainly will. And we did it first Instagram Live. Yay, we made Yay, it. Yay, we did it. Thank you. <laughs> Prince George Alrighty. County Executive Angela Also Brooks. Thank you again. Have a good Thank night. Thank you so much. You too. Good night. <laughs> bye bye now. Bye bye. Bye bye.